Uh, Alright, so yes, where we last left off here, uh, things went awry at the Stonehill Inn, uh, where a drunk Toblin uh, went ahead and tried to uh, seduce Graham and take him up to a room and have his way with him, uh, since they were already acquainted in the uh, downstairs region. Uh, to do the, uh, was it the horizontal cha-cha, I believe is what they call it, in uh, Fandolin. And, um, okay. anyway, uh, push came to shove, and uh, Mr. Um, uh, Herbert went ahead and sliced off the Toplin's arm. Or, not arm, but uh, his his hand. Anyway, uh, he was dry, he got drug off by a couple of folks in uh, in town. Uh, to a holding cell underneath the uh, mayor's house slash office. And uh, that's where our story starts. Start. Story starts. There we go. Okay. Um, so, kind of a house cleaning thing, or house uh, housekeeping here. Uh, we are sponsored uh, I by... IR underscore uh, Dankenstein. Oh, there's Taco. Storts. Oh, there's Dank. Hey, Dank. Um, hey. We are s- hey, Dank. How's it going? Uh, just as an FYI, everybody, uh, just for the sake of editing later, I'm going to turn off the text-to-speech temporarily. Actually, you know what? I'll leave it on. We'll just have everybody just be careful about what they what they type in and whatnot. So, um, Anyway, uh, back to what I was about to say here. The uh, IR uh, underscore Dankenstein. Balls. There it is, balls. IR underscore Dankenstein. <laughs> oh, okay. XD. Thanks, Dank. Uh, so just to let everybody know, we are sponsored by a company called Love by Stella. Uh, they uh, are helping us out with uh, supporting this program. If you guys like it, uh, show some love to her, um, or at least to her to her, or, uh, her group uh, over on uh, Facebook. And we actually have a quick advert that we'll play here real quick before we get uh, rolling here, just to fulfill our obligations. So I R underscore Dankenstein. They got Scooby plushie. That's right, they do have the Scooby plushie. And why it should play in a second, because of reasons. I should have tested this again. Ready, set, go. Oh. Alright, let's just imagine that it went through, <laughs> maybe. Why isn't it... Because you didn't say the magic word. Right? Please. No, that's not the word. Alakazam. No. So so guys, this is their new love by Stella. Normal. Hi there, guys and gals. I'm super excited about our sponsor because they make such cool crochet items and decorations that you are just not going to be able to live without. Got a new baby that's on their way into your family? Dragon, you if you try three grunts, it home. might work. Cool baby cocoon and, with oh, and, did. and for you new hey, parents out there, how about a crochet sleepyhead? Just sleep with a sleepyhead for a few nights and lightly spritz it with your deodorant, perfume, or body. Your baby will fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer with your smell. How about a Baby Yoda for your child or grandkids? Or even a Scooby-Doo dog for your child's forever home? And with winter on its way, Love by Stella also makes a cornucopia of blankets. And you know what? That's not all. Love by Stella also does custom designs. Take this kid's drawing, for example, that he did at school one day, for instance. Love by Stella made it into a full-sized best friend. Wreaths, coasters, beanies, dish scrubbies. Love by Stella does it all. Even custom unicorn pieces I can't show you on YouTube. Love by Stella even sent me this super warm beanie for my chrome dome, as well as this awesome knight's helmet beanie, with movable face mask for super cold and windy days, or just some extra cosplay for your next D&D session. And it's all super easy to order. Just go to Facebook and search Love by Stella and scroll down to see all the different items she has to offer. You can even ask her a direct question through the messenger function or even send her an email message directly. They're quick to respond and they take pride in each and every one of their handmade products. And now, back to the episode. What? He's doing the ant. Alrighty. Where? So, thank you, Dank. Uh, by the way, that, there was a little bit of an echo. I fixed that on the flag. I know what I have to do in the future. So, And the hoodles. Um, so yeah, uh, Graham, or pardon me, Herbert, um, just getting back into the game here, um, Herbert, you're, you're abruptly woken, um, by the ringing of a town, town hall bell in the background, um, that's immediately followed by the pain of a splitting headache. Um, in the morning here, you, you find yourself hogtied in a dingy and damp smelling stone room with solid iron bars guarding the door. 
there's a sliver of light that's coming from a barred window at the top of the room that lets in just enough light that you're able to tell that it's very, very early morning. Uh, as your headache sets in here, you hear a set of soft, uh, soft footsteps uh, that come down the stairs that, to you, might as well sound like a stampede of, of wildebeest, uh, followed uh, by a familiar voice of Darren Edermith, who cuts the rope uh, connecting your feet uh, to your hands in that uh, backwards hogtied fashion, and uh, he sits you up. Um, he tells you in your ear, you know, you, you did some terrible things last night at the at the Stone Hill that can't can't be forgiven, and they need to be accounted for. Um, Darren Edermith then offers you a, a small bottle of, of clear liquid and, and says again here, you know, best best drink, drink this quickly as it doesn't taste all too good. Um, really, the only thing it's good for is cleaning wounds and, and helping with the hair of the dog. Um, you know, you know I, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm giving up drinking. Up. Suit yourself. But, but uh, I'm not I'm giving not. up... On you. On you. Well, it's very, very kind of you. Very kind of you. Um, he puts the uh, Darren Edermith puts the the bottle away, uh, back into his uh, into his coat there. Um, at which point, uh, Darren and Lincoln Hawk uh, help Herbert to uh, to your feet there and escort you up the stone steps and out of the town hall, where you are actually met with not only a beautiful sunrise. But you're also greeted by it, the scowls of everyone, um, every one of the townsfolk uh, staring back at you. Uh, you're then led to this next to this strange wooden structure. Okay, so with this uh, with this town bell going off here, uh, I'm going to assume that Slotty uh, hears this uh, bell and comes walking over. Uh, and we'll see him right come on here why is this not working give me a second here sorry there we go there's slotty here um then um uh jd you hear the uh the town hall bell are you coming to see what are you coming coming hither yeah, uh, okay. I hear it, and I'm like, ooh, I wonder what that means. Let's okay. go and have a look. <laughs> okay. And I assume everybody else here, uh, Calypso and uh, Astrid, uh, you are also coming as well, correct? Yes. Okay. What, is, what does the bell correct. sound like? Like a church bell. Like, like a big like, gong. Like clang, <laughs> clang. Clang. Wow. Oh, uh, dinner's ready. Yep. I'll I'll edit in something something later. Um, Leader um, of the mind right now. Yep. Indeed. Uh, alrighty. So you're led up to this uh, this weird looking uh, wooden structure here, where uh, uh, Darren Edermith uh, announces uh, very loudly to uh, to the group or to the to the townspeople here. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. I I have this all in a in a notepad document here, and it's giving me problems here. Give me a second here. Here we go. Oh come on, give me a second. I have to bring it back open. Sorry, theater of the mind, everybody. Here we go. Um, we'll well, come uh, back. Oh, I'm sharing my video, by the way. It doesn't say you are. You see me I, I, I can see him. I don't think I can get this cord open. No. Yeah, it says there's no camera feed. Hmm. Well, I can see a feed. Yeah, I can see... I can see Grim. Oh, on Discord, yeah. I see in Discord. Discord. Yeah, I'm not able to see in Discord. That's weird. Oh, there Can you are. Connect? There you are. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. There we go. 
and Minnow just took the place of Graham, and JD is not no longer there. Goodness gracious! Let me let me fix it. Let me. <laughs> Surprise! That's why I wanted to say something. Thank you, Graham. Prayer with me here. So I got in your feed, and all I saw was Connie. Sausage use. Sweet salad. I see. No, you're nice. Oh, yeah. You can't tell by eating it. <laughs> it's sweet <laughs> and it's sour. <laughs> you don't know what it is and you're eating it. No, she keeps uh, buying different sauces from different manufacturers. All the sweet and sours don't taste the same. No, they don't. Hmm. That's very true. Sometimes it's orange sauce that is similar, but not really the same. Got it. Uh-oh, something. He's a little kooky, because Graham is displaying double for me. Okay, give me a second. I gotta re resize to do JD. Goodness gracious. It's because you Cause really, you... really want to look at me. Right. Um, these chickens. Sorry. <laughs> so while we're doing this technical stuff, I mm -hmm. can't use my earbuds and do video at the same time. Why not? It won't let me. Bluetooth. It won't let me do Bluetooth when I'm on a video call. So if it's echoey, I, I don't really know what to do about that. Okay. There's Herbert. Okay, now I can fix JD. Okay. Take me to the vet and fix me. <laughs> <laughs> Minnow. Minnow, what color do you want to be? I don't mind. Cool. Uh, definitely not green because that'll match the background. That's. Bless you. Oh, I thought somebody sneezed. Never mind. I hope you guys are all entertained by our daughter singing in the background. Oh, yeah. She's singing to the dog. <laughs> Alrighty. Now the stream should look super She's duper now. Me, yeah. Not sure. Alrighty. Let me bring back up the thingy. So nobody leave Discord. Nobody change anything. Because then it'll throw you guys off. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, back to our story here. Uh, Darren Edermith then announces in a loud, uh, booming voice to, to the entire townspeople here. Uh, you, lot, you lot know how this works. Per the Fandolin town charter and the power bestowed upon me to the mayor's, you know, in the mayor's absence. An eye for an eye, yeah? And the town people kind of just, they all nod, kind of doing, you know, saying the, you know, you know in, in agreement essentially. Um, he then, uh, um, leans over to, uh, to Leroy and says, you know, do you, do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, who's Leroy? Who's Le uh, Herbert, pardon me. Herbert, do you have anything to say for yourself? What are we doing? Well, you, you did some, some terrible things last night and cut off, uh, Mr. Toblin's hand. 
Uh, now we you need to uh, to attune for it to make things right again. But did but I? Did I? Was it really was it me? me? Darren Edomith uh, shouts to to the group here. Does anybody disagree or want to uh, claim witness? I and... do, as a matter of fact. I have something to share. Uh, Darren uh, points, IR underscore points over to, uh, to Calypso. The ADD is real. Many of you have met Herbert the Pervert. Surely others have heard of him. For those who do not know, Herbert is a noble cleric and a valuable member of the Thunder Force team. His courage and heroism is vital to our team's success in ending the reign of terror of the dreaded Red Bands. They were known as the Red Brand Ruffians, but they were much more than ruffians. They were violent terrorists. The night of our victory celebration, certain events transpired, and that's why we're here today, to understand exactly what occurred and who's to blame. We were out at Tailblin's Tavern, enjoying fellowship with one another and the good townsfolk. My dear dwarven friend requested a private conversation with the tavern keeper's wife in the back room. I don't know the nature of the conversation he intended, but all who have conversed with Herbert can assume he was seeking more than intimate, con intimate celebration. Uh, none of us know exactly what transpired in the back room that day, but I do know that our noble cleric entered that room upon the most sacred event, the pinky swear, that he would not touch her. Moments later, he reemerged, staggering and bleary-eyed. Now, I'm not saying he was drugged or cursed, because I know not what happened, but I do know that in that, that for a dwarf as of Herbert's constitution, there is no natural way for such a degree of intoxication to occur so quickly. Now then, pray tell, is it acceptable for a man to walk into a place of business, grab you against your will, and have his way with you? When you enter a place of business, do you expect the possibility that you'll be accosted by a larger man and forced to endure his will? Of course, the answer is no. The one thing granted to all of us is our personal sovereignty to determine our own fate. Now on the night of question, while celebrating the defeat of those who would stomp on your free will and personal safety, our heroic dwarf was poisoned by one then almost immediately accosted by her partner. I heard my dear friend tell Toblin he was not interested. Even in his severely compromised state, he had enough presence of mind to assert his sovereignty. And not only once, but twice he tried to escape Toblin's clutches. When he feared his inebriated state and smaller statue might cost him his safety, he did the only thing he could do. He cut off the hand that was seeking to control him. Our hero has spread his particular degree of love across this land. His lovers have been many and varied, but always willing. Past experience does not supersede any individual's right to say no to unwanted advances. I can only speculate as to what kind of kinky marriage they have but no guest of their establishment is under obligation to surrender their personal sovereignty along with their overpriced cost of an ale. But that seems to be precisely what the proprietors expected that night. Now, Mr. Mayor, why do you suppose business owners in your town would think they could overthrow the personal rights of others? Whatever could have led them so far astray from the virtues that most civilized humans hold dear? Perhaps they've witnessed what happened in this very community when the red brands moved in. While the good citizens were terrorized, the town's leadership cowered. At least one man in this community was murdered in cold blood while his wife and two young children were kidnapped and chained in a dungeon for God knows what depraved purposes. But you, Mr. Mayor, told me to my very face that the red brands were not a problem, just boys being boys. Well, you sat in your plush office and the children of your town took up arms to protect themselves and their families. Your town's children have blood on their hands because they could not rely on you to protect them. Meanwhile, you squandered the town's finances to line the Red Brand's coffers with your people's hard-earned gold. And for what? Flimsy polystyrene cups that will break and destroy the natural beauty and splendor of your town's ecosystem. Is it any wonder citizens in this town would behave as though there was no law? As though there was no civilized leadership? I declare on this day that Toblin was the exact cause received the exact cause of justice he deserved. And for her part, his wife will have to live with the burden of doing the work of her husband's other hand. But the guiltiest of today's culprits, Mr. Mayor, well, I leave it to the good citizens of this town to decide. Damn. 
Holy yeah. shit, Calypso. Um, so, um, Dragoon, I told you I had a plan. <laughs> you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't want, I wanted to be surprised. And uh, mission accomplished. Uh, Connie, uh, Calypso, go ahead and take inspiration. Hot yeah. damn. I, uh, Astrid goes over to Calypso and gives her a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren uh, Edermith uh, pipes up and says, you know, that unfortunately the, the mayor is uh, indisposed at the moment. Something about uh, peeing fire. I didn't, I didn't ask much too into it because it was still pretty early. Um, uh, Trilena Stonehill actually pipes in and says, you know, the you know the town charter clearly says an eye for an eye, and uh, and a tooth for a tooth, uh, but you do make you do make some valid points. Uh, I will leave it up to the to the town to to decide. Um, his his hands fate. Uh, Graham, uh, at this point here, uh, I'm going to change things up from from what was originally planned here and i want you to go ahead and roll a d20 uh pardon me uh, a d100 and before you roll the the d100 i want you to um i want you to say low or high i'm really sorry i had to answer the door uh oh, that's right i came back into saying you're actually going to change your mind maybe i by the way i did not tell you to give that speech she she planned that all out. No, no, I, I know, I, I. Um, what we're gonna, what the, um, Trilina has uh, Stonehill uh, in light of uh, Calypso's speech. She's a, a bit taken back as to, you know, everything that uh, that's happened and, and what uh, what actually transpired because her, um, her viewpoint was actually quite uh, quite acute and she clearly didn't know the whole story. Um, so she's actually asked the town people to to go ahead and make a a, a decision uh, collectively as a group um, to decide whether or not to take the hand or not. Okay, so okay, you want so me to roll a d twenty? D hundred. Actually, you know what? We can we can do a d one hundred. Uh, we can do a d twenty as as well. Um, your choice: d d twenty, d one d twenty, or a one d one hundred. And uh, I want you to go ahead and call low or high. To determine the outcome, high for keeping the hand, low for losing it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I do the D one hundred. Do they have that in the game? I believe I may have not accounted for this. Here, bear with me here. Your D tens. First oh, one is a. Yep. Is a Good tens. idea. Good idea, Mino. Yeah, go ahead and roll a two uh, two D tens. Oh, and uh, call lower high first before you roll. Where's the D10? Uh, the D10 will be... Um, let's... Uh-oh, did I forget the one to... in the middle? Fourth one across on the boards. Did I not put dice on the... Here we go. Uh, D8, 100s... It'll just be, click the script. It'll be uh, two of two of the uh, diamond looking ones here, Graham. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there'll be those two there. Well, um, you know, it wouldn't be rolling dice if I didn't put it in the cannon. There you go. That'll work. Oh boy, it fell in the bag. <laughs> oh, wrong dice. Nope, still wrong one. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. And call it lower high. I'm worried it's going to shoot off the table. Yeah, Call it. Oh no these uh, these these mats are, are calibrated. They should land in the in the landing zone here. Hi. Hi. Okay. Wait, that's one dice. Oh, where's, where's the other one? So that's the first one ended up getting okay that's an eight and we'll call that a ten so call that a 90 roughly okay no at uh, probably 80 so still above so yes you get to uh, keep your hands sir oh, 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 so wow. the 
just to kind of role play this out here real quick, uh, Darren Edermith uh, goes around to each one of the people um, and says, you know, uh, for for those who um, you know believe that the town charter should be should be followed to a T, regardless of, of circumstance, say I. And you see a respective amount of uh, people uh, raise their hand. And he says to to those who take the new information into light with the new um, new individuals amongst our, our myths here, including the potential uh, town town mayor, which should be you know investigated further, uh, among uh, other things. You know, s- you know, raise your hands, and um, it is in your favor, Graham, by a, a fairly l- large margin. And, wow. Uh, so so Herbert, Herbert is going to uh, look around look and around. go, I am going to take this moment to really find myself. I'm going to start by putting my hand in my pants. But once I find myself, then we can actually really work on the whole reform world. Oh, okay. God. Uh, Darren, Darren grabs your hand real quickly and says, uh, "Before, before you go to town here, I, I, I want to keep my rope clean." And he uh, unties, unbinds your hands that are uh, that are still binded together there, and uh, you're now free to, um, quote unquote, dig in. Uh, <laughs> all right, hey Darren, um, can I persuade you to give me a hug? Uh, Darren Edema says, "I, I." So, so if you're turning over a new leaf, go for it. Uh, go ahead and roll a per uh, persuasion. Uh, it's a d20. Adding whatever, adding or subtracting whatever modifier you have ground for that ground. Okay. I'm looking uh, it up. Uh, I should have had it up. Hang That's a plus That's a one plus to that. One. Okay, so that would be a 14. Okay. So uh, Darren Edermith uh, leans over uh, for a hug. And, and I'm going to let, let my left, left hand slide, slide down his back a little bit, like I'm just, you know, mm-hmm. going in there for a really nice rub-a-dub-dub hug. And then and I'm just going to graze his booty. booty. And then I'm going to um, say thank, say you, thank you for the hug and the booty. Okay. Give him a wink. Give him a wink. He's a he's a little bit shocked at it at first, but then he kind of he says, uh, f- "Yeah, fine." <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. And now I'm gonna go look around at the crowd and go, "All right, everybody, I am a new dwarf, and uh, I will uh, try to get back to my cleric roots here. But uh, I uh, want everybody to know here that." Uh, I want everybody to treat my buddy here, Minnow, just like me. That doesn't mean to tie him up unless, you know, he likes it that way. But if uh, you guys would please treat him like you would your own children. He likes it when you talk to him in baby language sometimes. And uh, he likes it when you pat him on the head. But no more of this uh, being terrified of him and running away. Everybody uh, kind of has like a bit of a bobbing head, as in the, they're all in agreement. Very well. I have spoken. This is the way. <laughs> you need. Are you going to tap your war hammer into the ground? Like um, a little uh, staff? <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. this a. Uh, we do have this campfire in front of us? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's still early morning. This is your only okay. source of light at the moment. And um, I'm going to add some theatrics. Let me see. Do I have any theatrics? You have thaumaturgy, don't you? Yeah, I guess I could use my cantrip. Okay, uh, then I'll use thaumaturgy. So that's the ability to... I'm not trying to intimidate anybody. I'm just adding more oomph to my speech here. So I cast thaumaturgy, and the fire starts to grow brighter and my shadow behind me gets cast to be even larger on the building and then the lights start to dim and suddenly flicker on all the houses around and i say in a big booming voice this is it 
Come touch me. <laughs> um, the the townspeople, their eyes are are agape by what uh, what's just transpired with the flames uh, billowing ever ever increasingly uh, higher and higher. Uh, to not only see uh, your your immense shadow uh, on the town hall behind you, uh, but also uh, everybody takes notice of the uh, prominent uh, natural bulge that you have um, where your nether regions are. Um, if you didn't notice, I got a new cod piece. <laughs> and uh, Herbert is ready to call it a night. Or move on to the next thing. All right. Uh, so Darren uh, chimes in. He says, "All right, now, all right, now. It's uh, early enough morning here. Y'all probably got a you know bit of a hair of the dog going on. So it's uh, nothing, nothing more to see here. Go about your business, and uh, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see y'all uh, later on today during during normal uh, normal town activities. And the uh, the crowd uh, starts to uh, to disperse there." Um, at the at the, about the same time that the the crowd is dispersing uh, as well, um, <clears throat> uh, Trilena uh, Stonehill uh, is going to go ahead and approach uh, Astrid uh, here at the same time and asks her, you know, could you, you know, with everything going on, do you do you have a moment to to spare? Okay. And we're going to go ahead and grab you guys and imagine that the townspeople are all gone. And it's uh, mainly just the party. Darren Edermith. Uh, you have Narth Gorelli uh, in the background here, and uh, you see little uh, little uh, Carp Toblin uh, sitting next to Trilena Toblin here. Uh, Trilena is going to say, you know, if, with everything that's going on here, Calypso really, you know, opened up our our eyes as to what's what's really going on behind the scenes. I know, you know, Toblin's had a problem for for you know quite some time, but I never thought it it would come to a head like this. Um, we seriously have some some things to work on as a as a couple, and I I hope that you know we can we can do that together with your with your group there. Um, I I guess it, all things considered, I I won't be really needing this anymore. Would you? Maybe maybe you'll find find something to do with it, perhaps. And she uh um uh Astrid, she hands you a bottle, uh, a wine bottle specific. Specifically. Uh, what is it? Um, it's a it's a special bottle we that Toblin and I found when we when we first opened up the 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 Stone Hill Inn. It it uh, it does some extra things here. We actually uh, we used it to to keep the stocks up in the back. We just we never really told anybody about it here. Um, it's a uh, it's a special bottle that uh, it'll it'll fill itself it'll overflow, you know itself with wine or it'll erupt with with wine here. Um, you see, it's got these little scratches on the on the bottom of it, and she points to to the bottom where it, uh, you see three three words inscribed at the at the bottom. Um, uh, she says, you know, just use it use it with caution. I unfortunately you got to see the the end result last night, and it's. I don't think it's anything that we really need at the at the Stone Hill, you know, until we can get our, our ducks in a row. I will hold on to it and keep it safe. Okay. All right, Astrid, uh, you are in, take notes here. You are in possession of a wine bottle. Uh, it has two. Uh, let's see here. Uh, two effects here. Um, the first effect is that when, while it's in your possession, uh, you have a plus two to your charisma. And its second effect is three power words, and I can I'll type these up to you, and I can send them to you as well um, in the uh, in the Discord here. Uh, the power words are drink, drunk, and turnt. Uh, drink it fills the bottle with wine when you speak it while holding it. Um, drunk uh, will overflow the uh, will overflow the bottle uh, with wine by approximately two gallons. And when speaking the word turnt, T-U-R-N-T, um, the bottle erupts geyser-like uh, with wine uh, approximately two feet wide and 30 feet uh, tall, if you know, pointed straight up, of course. Um, and if used as a weapon and pointed at somebody, uh, it will cause 2d6 uh, 
um, bludgeoning damage and pushes the target back 15 feet. I'm just going to lean over to Astrid and say, you know, I can hang on to that for you if you'd like. I will we'll celebrate with it later. What is what the is word drink do again? Uh, drink fills the bottle with wine. Yep. Drunk okay. overflows it. Two gallons turned geyser two feet wide, but uh, two feet by 30 feet. When used as a weapon, causes 2d6 of damage and pushes someone back 15 feet. So here's a silly question. Why would you want the bottle to be overflowing? To keep up your stock. They had a and they had the tavern, so they were using oh. it to have a never ending supply of wine. Oh yeah, gotcha. you can shove the bottle neck in a barrel and then <laughs> fill the barrel. We could yeah. go into business with this thing. We're gonna start a brewery, guys. <laughs> a winery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll, be, it'll be great. Out Stick of the uh, neck of the bottle. Out of, Stick out of, the neck of the bottle up, 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 up Graham's ass and say, so uh, Oh, drink. no. <laughs> <laughs> and her, I'd and... rather not have that, his various excretions on the bottleneck. Thank and you very much. And Herbert Bob. would promptly explode. Yeah. <laughs> or shoot Surprise. off like a cannon over a wall. <laughs> um, At yeah. the same time. Of uh, just so you guys know, of of said items, if you guys want to trade what you what's currently in your inventories, you're more than welcome to, uh, with what you have. Uh, out of out of out of game uh, speech, some of these items were specifically created for each individual's said characters. I'll let you guys figure out which ones they are, um, and that'll be based upon your guys' past requests of what you guys had wanted previously in game. So. Out of game, mm -hmm. Calypso. I think we're supposed to do a little switcheroo. Hey. What do I have? The candy. Oh, oh yeah. I, I will totally trade you the never-ending wine bottle for this bag of candy. Hell yeah. And then I'm also going to give you the book that kind of describes what they do. As a warning mm. that, you know, don't just start munching on candy. Without oh. any idea of what they could do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. Tracy's officially done. Uh, cool. Connie, uh, I'll send that info over to you as well. Don't forget, it also has that plus two to charisma as well. Yeah. Oh, good. I will copy and paste the note that I had. I'll send it to Connie. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Um, it's at this time here that uh, in the background you hear um, uh, Narth Gorelli come on over. He says, well, I guess uh, we ain't going to be needing this here after all. And he pulls out a, uh, um, uh, a piece of iron from the, from the campfire that was keeping it, uh, keeping it nice and hot. It was an extended um, uh, piece of wrought iron that had a round circle plate at the end of it here uh, that you can all assume was going to be to cauterize uh, almost said missing hand. And he says, you know, Darren, do you, you know, I got the extra material here. You need anything, you know, created off the off the top of your head? Otherwise, I'm just going to put this aside till you know, you know, next time, you know, something like this happens. And uh, Darren says, "Oh no, do do with it what you will. You know, somebody else, you know, can you know has has better use for it than uh, you know, you know, let them have it. But otherwise, you know, keep it on uh, keep it in inventory." And he uh, nods his head and uh, walks back off over to his uh, his smelter. Wait, can we? If you're not going to yeah. use that, can we have it. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose so. What uh, what would you use it for, other than you know, cauterizing wounds? I thought maybe but, our buddy here with the horns could use it as a back scratcher. Well, I don't know. I was thinking it's a long pole with a round, flat end. Is it right? Yeah. Which you could shove in a fire to heat up. That's one hell of a spanking rod, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, could we take that back to my dungeon? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, does the town need it? 
Uh, North replies back, "Well, it's it's some extra metal I had on you know on on hand here from the from the smelter, and there's I can always whip up another one here pretty pretty quickly. You know, I can okay, I can I can make just about anything out of metal here at a at, a, at you know with some some notice." Okay, um, so okay. since uh, you guys, it's an extra piece. Why don't uh, Minnow? I'll turn around. You just shove it down my, you know, just put it into my uh, pants there, and you know, just I'll turn around and bend over, and you just slide it in there. It's glowing red hot. <laughs> oh, at the moment, yes, it is still glowing uh, white hot. Yes. Uh, <laughs> or maybe put it in some water. Maybe put it in water first. Yeah, is there a water bucket nearby? Uh, North says, "Yeah, right over by the uh, by the pole there, over by the uh, the trough. That's where we normally keep the the water to okay, to go okay. And squinch things. I'm See, guys, uh, I'm the water over there. Theater of the mind. I actually found a, a water trough. There you go. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll take it. I'll stick it in the water, let it cool off, and then I'll give it to Minnow and say, all right, uh, I'll turn around here. You just uh." Shove it in there, and I'll, I'll keep it nice and safe until we get back to the dungeon. And drink. <laughs> well, Mino takes it, gives it a swift swing, and uh, it fetches up against your backside rather sharply, and then shoves it down. <laughs> Ooh. Gotta give you a spank before it goes in. That's what she said. Mino, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, are you doing this very playfully or to inflict oh, yeah. some type of harm? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to inflict pain. Not yet. Oh, okay. Oh, oh not yet. Second. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> he hasn't paid enough. Ooh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> uh, at that point here, uh, Narth kind of kind of gills at the same time here. He's like, ah, I thought about doing that with uh, the missus here, but, uh, you know, just... Anyway, uh, maybe you guys can figure out what, uh, you know... Maybe you guys can figure out what else you can can do with this. And he pulls out a uh, uh, a, a piece of socketed metal uh, that has two two clawed hooks uh, at the end of it here, with some wires and some some springs attached here. And you guys would I would see this as a um, as basically a prosthetic uh, uh, hand essentially that would have two uh, two prong like uh, hooks that would essentially open and close uh, with if things would have gone differently and Herbert would basically you move his his shoulder forward these two prongs would essentially open up and then retract uh, to close together and act as like a makeshift hand previously I will take it upon myself to uh, <laughs> take care, uh, hold on to that uh, and will fit it to our handless friend what? Oh, that you're going to use it as a forehead flicker. No. I think it should be used for the uh, the recipient of Herbert's uh, anger. Copeland. Yeah, him. Name. Names are hard. So what, uh, Herbert still has his hand, Violet. No. Uh, so the the hand that he cut off. Oh, for Toblin. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Good idea. And since I would have... Um... Narth actually uh, he points over to a, uh, to a set of tools uh, over on his workbench here where you see uh, another one that's actually identical uh, to it. He says, that one's, that one's waiting for, for Toblin to, to wake up, actually. So he's, he's got one you know, coming to him. Okay. Might I suggest that we hold on to this for the time being in case someone goes and loses a limb? Uh, that's fine by me. I am happy to hold on to it. Okay, I'm going to eye over at Minnow and go, you got any other ideas? Mm. Narth says, well, if you, if you have anything else in, in mind for it, and you know, bring it on back here, or any of the other uh, you know blacksmiths and stuff like that, and... Uh... In the, in the world can probably you know, help you out with uh, the parts that I got on, on hand here. We know it. An extra hand to scratch your balls with. There you go. Woo Alrighty. With that, is anybody else doing anything else? I think... We should maybe head back to our our place. 
Head back yeah. home. I agree. I, I want to see what the goblin's doing and uh, yeah. see what kind Charles of Charles Jr. too. I'm worried about <laughs> Charles Jr. Fair he enough. Needs to see. Fair enough. Alrighty. Um, let me bring up Headquarters of Solitude. Bear with me. I mean, that makes us sound like Superman. <laughs> what was that, from session 12? I think it was from session, yeah. Yep, it was 12. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I had the right, uh, right one here, so... Okay. It should have loaded in for everybody. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. and okay, Violet's Yay. just loading in. I did it. <laughs> oh my god, Graham, already? <laughs> What what did you do? What can I do with my new prosthetic arm? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> getting getting started quickly, I see. Fair enough. Alrighty. So um <clears throat> Graham, you're gonna be visiting uh your uh your goblin buddy and Violet, you wanna go ahead and visit with uh, Charles Jr., correct? Yeah. Okay, we'll resolve these here uh, one at a time here. Um Graham, what are you bringing up? Can can I touch things with my new arm? Y yes, yes, Graham. You can. <laughs> yes, you you can touch things all day long with with your new arm. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! All right, we'll let Graham do his searches and stuff like that, and we'll come back to him when that afterwards that here. time it that time it wasn't Graham. Yeah, yeah. it was erroneous. Oh, now, JD, what can I do yeah. with my new prosthetic arm? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jay. I'm right. just trying to wipe everything <laughs> off it. All right, fair enough. Oh, I've got. A... Before you can continue, you must accept cookies. Really? <laughs> cookies I like are yummy. cookies. Delicious Oops. cookies. All right. Wow. Um, Astrid, uh, you come back and you uh, come over to your little uh, home away from home here in your mm -hmm. solitude area have you did you guys come up with any type of name or any type of place that you refer to it as other than like you know our headquarters or anything like that mm. home yeah all right home it is uh violet you come to um uh, come over to uh charles jr here who is actually sound asleep actually in the in the corner here uh in a kind of a, a, a um a bunch of uh, rags he was able to kind of scrap together here from the uh, from the bodies and stuff like that that were le left behind. Uh, still with an extend uh, distended stomach, um, and uh, as soon as you come within uh, about thirty feet or so, he uh, he he f basically feels your mind and you feel uh, his mind connect with yours and says, <laughs> uh, "What? What? What?" Astrid, are you still yep. there? Sorry, you cut out for me. I couldn't hear. Oh, um, Charles Jr. Basically, you hear his mind connect with yours, and uh, he's uh, you kind of hear a, a very sleepy like what? Oh, go back to sleep, Charles. I think as I go over to the area okay. where my journals are and I take some notes as he rests. Fair enough. Uh, in in our group's fashion, you hear this, uh, instead of uh, your mind connecting uh, uh, voices in your head, you he actually hear out loud kind of a, you know, little uh, puffs of air come out, um, which are followed by the stench of, like, uh, meat farts. Accurate. Cute little meat farts. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it's not on my bed and it's on rags instead. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Alrighty, uh, as Violet, uh, or pardon me, uh, uh, Astrid continues with her 
uh, note writing and stuff like that. We'll change narration over to um, Herbert. Uh, Herbert, you actually find uh, Travers uh, over in the uh, middle of the uh, the crevice, uh, previously the south side of the crevice, uh, where the uh, bridge had uh, had collapsed. Here, uh, you see him actually finishing up with the with the bridge. It's actually it looks brand spanking new and much more fortified than it was previously. So where is Herbert? Here he is. We yank it over here. Just so everybody knows here, everybody, we're, we're over this direction here. Okay. Uh, Trevor, uh, he meets you over at the uh, at the the edge of the um, the bridge here. Says, "I I I did." Uh, uh, hold on, uh, I forgot Trevor's voice. Um, okay. I, I I made the break. I made it better than than it was before. Uh, it'll hold a lot more weight. Even the even the big cow guy, it, it'll it'll hold him too. Spectacular, my friend. It's what about new. the dungeon room? It it. Well, I I talked to Bridge since it was a, a, a more important. It, it needed a little bit more uh, more work than other things. So I got some I got some special things uh lined up here for the. Uh, 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 for for the dunk, for the sex room, uh, I got some materials. Uh, but I I may need a couple more barrels to make it uh, to make it complete and uh, and make it look look better. Uh, so he goes and shows you over at the uh, shows you the uh, uh, his progress. Uh, it's actually quite minimal uh, so far, uh, Graham for um, for the sex room. Um, he has a essentially what you would uh, know to be like a torturing rack, where they basically uh, tie your hands and your feet together um, and they pull you apart slowly. Um, oh, wait a second, we have two Travers. Shit, only have one. Oh, oh, shit, we lost Graham and Travers. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see where is. I think we use a generic goblin here. Anyway, we'll get you back here in a second. Um, so yeah, you see just some some basic uh, like a, a basic rack um, to basically pull people apart. Um, you know, Trevor says yes, yes, this'll be good. You can whip people on, or you can uh, if you want to. You can uh, you can pull them apart, and it's uh, that is that good. Something, something like that. That's a good start. I think what we'll do is, uh, in our adventures ahead, we'll just bring back stuff that we find. Sounds good. And he kind of gives you a, a little bit of a salute, but the, the salute is on the, the wrong side of his uh, wrong side of his face. Oh, that's okay. I'll give him a salute from my groin, which is actually right at eye level. Oddly enough. There you go. <laughs> I'll just thrust my hips forward and. Use my hand and just, uh, if this is my groin, I go, whoop. <laughs> okay. All righty. Anybody else want to do anything else? Nope. All righty. Okay, uh, so at this point here, what I'm going to ask everybody to do is kind of decide amongst yourselves uh, what you guys want to do next. Uh, we do have the four, um, uh, what do I want to say here, the uh, four uh, active quests that you guys have uh, ongoing. If you guys want to do that, we can go ahead and go down one of those uh, storytelling paths, uh, or we can do role play out what you guys want to do next if you have anything. So can we discuss as a group what our four quests were? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Do you want me to list um, them off? Well, yeah, do you or if... Oh, uh, yeah, I can. Them. Yep. Uh, active yeah. quests. Uh, Myrna's heirloom. Family shop in the ruins of Thunder Tree and retrieve her family's heirloom as a reward for saving her and her family. Those are the people that were in the dungeons before its refurbishment. Teach new dogs old tricks. The children of Thunder Force have asked Minnow to teach them how to better be better adventurers like him. Old Owl Well Part 2. 
Find the name of the wizard who built the tower at Old Owl Well and Grifto's magnificent fork. Retrieve his fork and return it to him. Find Margaine in a heap of papers in the old library of Neverwinter. Where do we want to start? Um, we should check out a map and see if we can okay. plan this out and plan out our expedition. I agree. Okay. Let's see if we can make a whether we can kill two birds with one stone or if we can just make like a circle or a general adventure okay. path. I actually have a copy of said map of Fandolin. Or no, no, not Fandolin. Uh, yeah, I have Fandolin here. Let me get the uh, full, uh, full size picture here. Bear with me two moments. At the north half of the Sword Coast, didn't it? Correct. Correct. I'm going to go ahead and post that in our D&D &D portion here real quick. Hopefully it's not too big. Yeah, unfortunately I've got high density copy, so it's like way too big for Discord. Oh, I see. I see. All right, well, let me do this here. Um, I'll That's go on. That works. Did it upload? Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah, my copy's much bigger than that, so mine wouldn't show up. Mine's just bigger. Size <laughs> matters. Yeah. Oh, only other um, wizard name that we have come across is Glassstaff. But I'm not sure if we want to swing by and try glass staff as mm. to open that door or do we want to explore see if we can find additional names and swing back on our way back okay um how far is it like how long would it take to get there actually let me the old owl. do this instead here I'm going to go ahead and put a map up onto the screen here that's actually a little bit more local. Uh, just promise me no metagaming at all possible. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's the map that I've got. That's okay. one of the maps that I've got. <laughs> so if, if you're on the stream here, guys, you can take a take a look here. Um, you actually, you're down here in, uh, Fandolin here in the lower, uh, lower right-ish kind of corner. Uh, you have, uh, Neverwinter in the upper left-hand corner. That's actually where you guys started out in, uh, in your guys' questing when, at, in, like, session one or session zero. Uh, you have Agatha's Lair, which you guys completed up there. You have Old Owl Well in the upper right-hand corner, as well as, uh, Wever and Tor. Um, and that Cragmaw hideout from session two. So, Myrna's heirloom is going to be in Thunder Tree, which is up by Neverwinter. Uh, the Teach Teach New Dogs, uh, uh, Teach New Dogs Old Tricks, um, Minnow uh, or, or Party. We're going to have you guys go ahead and start that at the uh, new uh, Thunder Force Guild building. That'll be the uh, com uh, that'll be the beginning of that one there. Um, Old Owlwell Part 2, find the name of the wizard who built the name of the Tower of the Old Owlwell. That one, consider that one, um, the next lead on that one, not, uh, it, it, let's consider that it hasn't been unlocked yet. Oh, I thought it had, because we'd heard another, mm -hmm. um, another mage name when we were, okay. when we entered this town last. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that that was possibly the name. Okay. You can, um, you're, look you're more than welcome to try, but um, I'll, I'll let you know here, just kind of meta gamingly wise, it's the the door was sealed uh, like 500 to like a thousand years ago. So, all oh, right. So, I was thinking about the uh, the book 
we passed a book on the necromancer <clears throat> uh Tezanoff. Oh yeah. Um, 100 years ago and I thought, "Hmm, that's a name that might be worth trying." Remind me again, Minnow. Remind you of Oh, uh, Tezanoff that you learned from uh Haman Cost, right? That was from uh, Sister Garel. Garelli, yeah. Garelli, yeah. That oh, you actually terrible. you actually tried that one at the door, actually. Did we on Did on we their try? on the first try? Yep, yeah. because they they oh, originally really? went to Agatha's lair first, and then they went mm. to Old Alwell, and then they went to Reverend Tor. That's when you guys uh, ended up, you know, TPKing and then going to the Plane of Mischief. Right, so that one's been tried. Okay, mark that one off. Um, cool. And then one of my personal goals is in Thunder Tree. So the runes of Thunder Tree called to me. Your family and their friends once lived in prosperity there, and now they're reduced to menial labor. So I will need to take some more time in Thunder Tree myself. Okay. And uh, Grifto's magnificent fork. Uh, you were told uh, as to uh, you were the last lead that you were given by Grifto uh, was to find um, uh, 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 Neric Falkreth's brother. Uh, his name is Margain. Uh, he told you to probably go to the old library in Neverwinter because he did Margain would probably be in a heap of po uh, a heap of papers there. Is where you'd probably find him. So what are everybody's thoughts? Looks like most of the stuff is heading up north to Neverwinter and Thunder Tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you think we should go to Neverwinter first and then go over to Thunder Tree or go to Thunder Tree first and then Neverwinter? Well, Neverwinter's first on the road, isn't it? Because you'd have to go up the river to Thunder Tree. Do we have to stay on the road? You could always take a shortcut, absolutely. Where's the forest fire? Oh, yeah. How bad is it at the moment? <laughs> can, can we even get across country? <laughs> you could try, absolutely. Nobody's uh, nobody's really given much thought to it or pursuing it. It hasn't really come up other than, uh, I think Violet mentioned it like every session, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's going to be, it's gonna be it's... around Crackmore, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that'll be on the main Tribor Trail as we head out. Do we have anything that could possibly put out a forest fire. I would suggest the wine, but that could also alcohol. be bad because it's alcohol. Yeah. 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 Uh, not Unless... if you do it in a huge quantity, though, right? If you just like. I'm skeptical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the only thing that I know but... that we have. Wait a minute. Don't make it worse. Yeah. If you if you use turnt and use it as a geyser, maybe the force of it will. Mm, no, that. Blow. If there is one ember remaining, the whole place is now soaked in alcohol and will go up much yeah. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go bigger. What go percentage? Home. What percentage of alcohol <laughs> would you say this content of this wine would be, hypothetically speaking? <laughs> I would say it is the average amount of wine alcohol by proof, which we what's let's let's Google it. Twenty five, thirty percent. Yeah, let's not do that. Uh, let's see here. ABB is the global standard of measurement for alcohol content. Uh, ranges, let's see here. Uh, wine is about 5.5% to about 16%. So I would say that was actually uh, alcohol. I know this for a fact, actually. Uh, it's about at, at about 40% alcohol by volume is where uh, alcohol becomes uh, flammable. Oh, then we should be fine. Let's try it. Is it red wine or white wine? Uh, red Scroll wine. Up. Okay, so yeah, you're looking at between 12 and 15 then. <laughs> you got to make sure that the, the red wine goes well with forest fire. Is 
Yeah. Is that what you said? It is the Woody oh. Notes. Yeah, yeah, those red wines, and it's a nice deep red Sauvignon. We get a nice it's smoky the, flavor. Uh, yeah, I have fruity legs. Did you say something about fruity legs? Yeah, it's, it's the, the whole thing. Yeah. Why would there be legs in the wine? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Oh. I'm not, I'm not a serial killer. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm totally... Uh, now I want to know about fruity legs. We can talk about that later. Um, you. you have you fruity have... legs? Are you being serious about not understanding what it is? I, I, when you swirl the wine... Are, are you talking as Herbert or are you talking as Graham? Oh, right now we're, me, we're metagaming outside of the... the we're, we're, we're speaking mm-hmm. meta stuff. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, but we need to get back in the game so we stay on track. We, somebody will explain that to me shortly. Two shakes of a lamb's tail. Do we have a lamb's tail? No. Do you want one? Two shakes of a nose instead. No. You, you, you oh guys have God. come across a, a sheep and a painting. You could have taken one there. Well, yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> so where are we going to go? Are we going to put out a fire? Let's put out the fire. Let's try, yeah. Dungeon Master, how do we go about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> to... <laughs> oh, no. Go and look first. Let me, <laughs> might be, oh, no. might be beyond you. Let me, let me, I'll, I'll just put some, some fun little captions here above my head. Dungeon Master says, here's four quests. Party says, fuck that noise. Here's a fifth that you weren't prepared for. <laughs> um, yes. Close. You said you were prepared for it. There's, there's that 5%. There's that 90, 90, 95% that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the closest one to that is going to be teach new dogs old tricks. Is the close I could probably get you to that. It'll it'll get you on the on the same path to complete said forest fire. How's that sound? The, the Thunder Force kids are going to become firefighters as a part of their yes. training. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, they let's could. do that. It'll be great. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So we kill all the kids from the village. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we need to, like, I can make, like, a little, uh, you know how in, what was it? With the nun, and Madeline, and they had the rope, and the mm-hmm. kids held on to the rope as they walked. Like, we could do that with them, and it would okay. be cute. It would be cute. All right, so let me load up Fandle in here real quick. We'll do some quick role play, and we'll get you guys on that path here. And we're coming up on an hour and 45 minutes. So everybody knows, just in case. We can go a little bit longer time-wise if you guys want. That's perfectly fine. It's up to you. Okay. Yay, right. it loaded in for me. Surprise. Woohoo! Alrighty, so for everybody here, the Thunder Force Guild, established by Mr. Minnow, is over on the east side of Phandalin. Okay. Um, okay, you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Bear, pardon, pardon the oversized children here. That's, that was <laughs> it's the house. <laughs> Something went wrong. Was there like a was was there like radioactive muck or something? <laughs> yeah. They just ate their babies and all their okay. vegetables. Were there turtles yeah. nearby? Yes. Oh. Teenage mutant. Alrighty, everybody, do me a favor here. Uh, go ahead and bring your characters over, and we'll get this party started. There's parkour. Slotty's <laughs> Slotty's just yeeted, you know, into the into the building. Goodness it's totally gracious. fine. Totally fine. Sorry, Slotty. He he might be watching. He's probably still sleeping. And the hoodles. Um <clears throat> As you guys all as a as a group I assume it went something like, hey, let's go over to the Thunder Force Guild and figure out what we're going to do with them pesky little kids. 
They're not pesky, they're adorable. Yes. Why is there a ginormous hook? What? Oh, well, like yeah, hanging down. Um, <laughs> like, um, I don't know. We're going to have to talk to Minnow about that. He's the one that's in, <laughs> in charge of like construction. It, I'm assuming it's for building as opposed to like hanging little children as you know meat products. Uh, yeah, we just that, put one on the hook and then the others can hit it like a pinata. <laughs> the swing's oh. in there, kids. Hit it. <laughs> so, no, you'll, you can put like a big hay bale on it. Oh, that's not it's, fun. Hmm. It could be. Or we could put, you know, like a, a dead body up there. That's oh, yeah, zombie I'm not... pinatas. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible play. Actually, that sounds like oh, a lot of goodness. fun. Alrighty. It's the Halloween session. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're actually getting close. It's actually uh, next week. Actually, it'll be yeah. Halloween. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll we'll do something special for that. We'll 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 talk in the in the D and D group with with ideas and what we could do special for it. Uh, we could even do cosplaying now that we got uh, you know cameras and stuff like that going. But anyway, uh, back into the uh, to the game here, uh, uh, game talk. Um, as you guys are making your way across that uh, last bit of street there in Fandolin over to the to the Thunder Forest Guild here, um, the four children that you guys have known to to you know basically fall in love with at this point here, Minnow come up to you and says, Minnow, the the fairies they're gone. The fairies are gone. The fairies are gone. What did what did can, what do we do? What do we do? Um. Okay. Well. First of all, kids, fairies is not a very polite term. They're just gay people, okay? The, the, really? They didn't seem gay. <laughs> well, okay. Where did they go? We, we don't know. We we we're, we normally go out into the into the forest, and and when when our parents aren't are really babysitting us, and we we play with them, they teach us things. What sort of things did they teach you? <laughs> well, all kinds of things. They they teach us, you know, some some like different languages, and sometimes they teach us like a sign language, and how to make a fire. You know, basic basic adventuring things. Sometimes they they can sing. They teach us songs. Can you take us to meet the fae? Yeah, we could we could take you there, but there's no there's no fairies there. We could we could take you there. That's here here. Uh, fo follow me. I know a shortcut. And uh, they take off running. Do you guys follow? Yes. Yep. Sweet. Let's avoid tetanus, though. Yes. <laughs> All right. Avoid um, the big musty hook. It's fine. Let me bring up my quest. Teach new dog soul tricks. Okay. Looks in the ceiling for that well hung feeling. You, you guys are gonna like this map. I I I just about guarantee it. it may arrow out a little bit, but. Woo! Sorry. Lots of square boxes. They, yeah, they should load here. It, there's a lot of assets. Tally. But you guys should be starting all over on this side of the map here. Oh, this looks pretty cool. By your by your characters and stuff like that, yeah. So uh, the the little children uh, lead you into the the edge of the forest. That uh, oddly enough, it the the forest starts to quickly change and morph, and you start seeing you know uh, mushrooms and different uh, different uh, different types of um, what you guys would consider you know fey uh, type of. Uh, uh, fey type of uh, 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 plants and uh, small animals and stuff like that kind of scurry about there and, uh, as, a, as a low fog uh, kind of hugs the, the ground real closely and the, the, the soil becomes more uh, more porous and, uh, and more uh, nutrient rich and, uh, and moisture ridden. Uh, you see it, just a whole bunch of uh, trees here as the children uh, lead you uh, in further and further into this forest here uh, until you come to a uh, basically a giant um, 
uh, not crevice, um, basically uh, like a miniature like cul-de-sac. Uh, basically a, a small uh, clearing uh, that leads further into what you can see kind of off in the distance as a, as a small cave uh, with trees strewn around with these odd, uh, odd stone uh, pillars that are kind of uh, strewn the, the land here. Uh, the children uh, they come over to you here again and says, "Oh, it's it's right up here. It's right above. Uh, they they normally are are in the cave when they when they want to sleep, but they're they're not there. They're not there anymore." Let me unlock. Where do you the think shed. they went? We don't know. Did they have they, rainbows? They some they can make rainbows sometimes when it rains. Where do the rainbows come from? So everybody, go ahead and do me a favor and uh, take a look around, see what you like. And the I the got children. Booted, so I'm just watching the stream. Okay. So the children lead up to um, uh, bring you guys up to this uh, um, obelisk. It says, so this is where we normally play with them, where they they teach us things here, and then uh, they sleep back in the in the cave in the in the back there. Mm, this is giving me Doctor Who vibes, and I don't know how I feel about it. Don't blink. Can I roll investigation on that tower-looking thing? Yes, monolith. absolutely. Monolith. On the monolith. Go ahead and give me some rolling dice action, action there, Calypso. Three. Three plus... Um, four, so seven. Okay. Uh, everybody want to move their characters up? I don't think we can. Or are you guys here? Me, uh, maybe it doesn't allow me to. There, I'll unlock you guys here. The ground was kind of uneven for the most part in here, so I had to, I had to lock things a lot. So okay, you guys should be unlocked. And what did you roll for an investigation there, Connie? Seven. Roll a seven. Okay. Uh, on the uh, you basically approach the the monolith here. Uh, that's actually kind of just draped, and it's been overgrown here to a certain extent. Here with the uh, you know tight hugging mosses to the stone here. Uh, you see a, a couple of inscriptions here that you're able to actually uh, recognize. Um, that basically says, uh, "Stand here and." Does anybody else want to? Uh, to help her out or investigate? I'll give it a shot. Well, who has a uh, modifier for investigation? Mine's four, and it didn't help me much. Yeah. I rolled a 13, but I got a zero for inve Same. investigation. Is this a step in the right direction? Anybody going to roll it? Would a 13 work? Yes, a 13 will definitely work. Uh, Graham, or pardon me, um, uh, Herbert, uh, you go up to this uh, monolith here, and uh, being so close to the ground here, you're able to uh, to see that there's uh, uh, this monolith is kind of uh, obscured a little bit here and there uh, with this moss here, and you're able to, to brush aside and kind of clear out the nooks and crevices and crannies of, uh, of the monolith. Uh, to actually see what uh, what it currently says, uh, Graham, what uh, what languages does your character speak? Hmm, that's a very good question. Oh. What is that? I know it's dwarvish yeah. and common for sure. Oh yeah, that's it. Those are the only two. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, you actually find a, a panel that doesn't the the the, uh, the script the the, the carved in uh, of the stone looks weird. Uh, but as you're you're making your way around the, the monolith here, you're actually able to find one of these flat panels uh, in in dwarvish of all things here uh, that you're able to to go ahead and read. 
Uh, do me a favor, everybody go ahead and uh, uh, hover their mouse over the top of the monolith, and you'll be able to actually see what I wrote. I mean, what it says on it. Stand here, and may gestures guide you on your path. So, in character, as mm -hmm. I read that, I go, gestures guide you on your path. Are we talking about jerking? In quotation marks. Or... Something else. One of the children responds, I don't... What's what's jerking? Well, you well, see, I, children... Um, dried beef. <laughs> you take, take a, a giant sausage <laughs> and you put your hand around hand. it and you just lube it up lube with it up. Uh, um, some lard. lard. We got lard we got around lard. here, right? There's lard, lard. everywhere, right? Lard is good, and lard makes things slippery, so you gotta be careful. But you um, can lube up. You can you, you put that uh, lard on that sausage. Why don't? And um, you can go to town on it. Just rub it. But one of the the children kind of pipes and says, "I don't remember the the fairies teaching us anything about that here. They 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 usually." You know, sit us sit us down a lot of times at uh, at some of the the shrines around here, and uh, teach us about you know the different parts of your body, and and, and other stuff. They usually had like a, a jingle that went along along with it. Well, um, well, I'll take you to the sausage some... statue later when you're different age. Oh, is is that a different shrine? Yes. Yes. Okay. More um, of a sacred pole. Oh. Adults only. Um, so one of the uh, the children uh, says, "Here, let me let me show you around a little bit. Maybe this will it'll, it'll help here." And I rolled a four. Okay. Uh, they lead you over to uh, one of the uh, one of the shrines here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, they actually lead you to a shrine here, a little bit further on out here. Uh, I've left a, a marker here. Uh, a shrine uh, that at the bottom of it here, uh, in all different types of languages, uh, says shoulders on it. And um, the the kid says, normally when they, they the the fairies when they want to you know have like a a, a class and, and teach us about the 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 world here, they teach us about you know the the parts of, of people's bodies so that we like can their butts? we can so, no not always, um, but like at this shrine over here, they they taught us about shoulders. Um, and sometimes they, they would have, what was that? Everybody else, what, what was that, uh, what was that, that jingle again? I can't remember. And the other kids, uh, kind of, uh, uh, gesture to, to their shoulders and says, uh, um, shoulders, Head and shoulders, shoulders, they shrug you all about, all about shoulders. They make you, uh, they throw ab about, yeah, scream and shout. yeah, sometimes, sometimes they scream and shout. Uh, some and they have like clavicles, like shoulders. They some have have clavicles, clavicles. Sometimes the shoulders are connected to other parts of your body. E to your testicles and other lingering things. Go get the luck for that statue. Yeah, yeah, you got the tune down right. Yeah, that's the right one. That's the right tune. You, do, have you been here before? Testicles. I don't know about testicles, but you got the tune I right. I need his friend to my elbow to change the subject. So I'll give you, I'll give you guys a clue. If you're on, you're on the right path here with the tune. Now there's something about those letters that are drawing you guys to them. To H. back to the back to the monolith. What are the letters? Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Uh, Graham, a uh, of one side of the of the monolith when you when you finish that tune, actually it lights up. It's uh it starts glowing. He's in toes. The fables magic dildo. <laughs> There's a dildo with toes. Here the uh, the the children <laughs> the children uh, pipe in here. It goes along with the song. It's the uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees and toes, and they show you the uh, the motion uh, that goes along with it. Motion of the ocean. K 
Kids, do you have a cushion that needs pushing? Because this this monolith might help us with that. I don't know about that, but some the the, the fairies taught us that some some mushrooms they can be used as uh, as seats in a, an emergency as a flotation device. Oh, does that I love flotation that? devices. If you put them underneath your shirt, they make them look like you got boobs. <laughs> So, so, anybody else want to sing along with me? Others, I'm, I'm doing all the yeah, singing. Yeah, I'll do the burn thing too. Oh boy, everybody, See, watch out! Flips out of out of out of game here. This is why I really wanted to have you guys have the uh, have the the webcams on. Wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge, to to solve this monolith puzzle for me. Okay, so <laughs> Calypso <laughs> is gonna follow me. I'm gonna go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. <laughs> uh, the the monolith when when Graham says this or when uh, when Herbert says this it it lights up, uh, but when it gets to the the very end it uh, it just it's just the glowing just kind of fades. Oh, that's like, I sometimes have that problem. Together. Everybody, Everybody on one side. side. How many sides are there? There is one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a total of six sides for yeah, each line, right. each line of the letters. There's only f five of us, but we got the children, and we can make them do what we want. Really? Yeah. Uh, everybody, do me a favor here, since. Uh, your eyes, you guys are all concentrating on these on these strange letters. Uh, give me a, a perception check for me. I rolled with my bonus sixteen. 16. Okay. Uh, Graham, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Herbert, um, with that, with your 16 here, you're able to, uh, kind of piece together, um, that these, uh, the other, uh, uh, stone pillars and stuff like that basically each go ahead and correspond to, um, to this tune that you were taught as a, as a child, uh, un un unknowingly where you don't know where, you know, this kind of tune came from here when you were taught as a child or its, uh, origins here. Um, but there's a piece of this, um, but there's a piece of the um, passage that's missing in those uh, those little brackets there, about the uh, uh, fifth, fourth one down, no fifth, one, two, three, four, fifth one down. It. And I got it. I got it. The, the, chi so. the children basically say, uh, hey, they they taught us everything else, but they they said you you had to know the the secret words for to to know the full song. How about we surround the monolith and we go in order? So someone takes the first phrase or the first stanza, someone takes the second stanza, third stanza, fourth stanza, etc. And then the kids can finish it off with the very last stanza, which is knees and toes. Sounds good. Okay. Go ahead and uh, line yourselves up. Go ahead and place your place your characters. Minnow can't sing. But Minnow can Minnow can gesture. Oh yeah. Just like that. Looks at the monolith and flips the bird. <laughs> you somehow know in your in your heart of hearts that the monolith is somehow extending its monolithness to give you that bird back. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing to me? <laughs> I'm trying to put you down. Yeah, I, like I, tr I tried making you guys making this as flat as possible to. All right, I don't need to be any closer. I'm good. <laughs> here, 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 here. Let me. I, I, there. Here, 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 here. here. Goodness gracious. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll get you, man. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Oh, I wanted to sit I, on top. I promise this worked like... It's because like, there's a piece of grass there. There we go. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay. There's a little piece of grass in the way. We'll say the the four children go ahead and they stand on this uh, last piece of the of the the, the monolith here. Uh, so you guys all basically uh, take a side, and uh, they say, "Okay." The little children say, "Okay, everybody, now uh, go go around the circle. I'll start off. Or I'll, 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 we'll go last." And and you guys uh, you guys do the first part and then and then then it it might work I guess maybe. All right, I'll take uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes first phrase. Calypso, you take the second one, knees and toes. Astra, no wait. Now I'm I'm going to request that you guys all do the the gestures. Yeah, it says gestures, um, not voice. Oh. That's why it's not working. <laughs> uh... Got it. Got it. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes. A side of the monolith lights up very brightly. Knees and toes. Another oh, side. Exciting. Another side lights up very brightly. It worked. With Ooh. gusto. Ben, oh, you're next. Mmm. And he looks at the one I think is heads, shoulders, knees, and hooves. <laughs> the the, mo the monolith interprets that and basically says, "Eh, fair enough." Um. <laughs> The uh, 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 filling in for Slotty. Slotty uh, goes ahead and also does the uh, 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 knees and toes. Then there's the uh, fourth fourth part or a fifth part. Pardon me. Uh, the little the the kids uh, follow follow suit with uh, what Graham had told them earlier. What Herbert told told them earlier. Uh, eyes and ears and mouth. Oh, pardon me. I got to do, do it on the stream too here. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Astrid? Astrid, you're up. Astrid, where are you? Astrid! Pilot. You know, the right, yeah. DM put a K in front of that S, so... Are we supposed to say knees, shoulders, knees, and toes? And, oh, pardon me. That that K should be a H. Sorry. I, <laughs> the the DM may have made a small clerical error when when putting in the puzzle before you. Just imagine it's an H. I could substitute I for Estra if she's away. Okay, go ahead. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. There you go. Uh, and with that uh, last uh, phrase of, uh, of toes, uh, you hear the last uh, side of the monolith light Violet's up. Violet's gem. Oh. Mic not working. Oh, Violet says the, the mic isn't working there. Um, any hoodles. Uh, with the, um, with the, the, the last word of uh, a toes there, you guys actually see the last side of the, of the monolith light up very, very bright, and all your guys' vision... Uh, goes whitish red, and you you feel and, and you can hear like the, the the air crackling and sizzling around you. Uh, We're having it's, an it's, orgasm. It's not it's not painful, but it's kind of tingly and kind of feels good at the same time. Um, at this point here, you guys see a uh, the air turn red around you, and mm -hmm. I had an animation to this for you, just you guys. You guys able to, to see that, kind of? I'll move it so it yeah. it makes it look good. I'm back. I'm going to pull a Danny DeVito here from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm tripping balls! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you guys see uh, the, the redness basically go ahead and push you guys all back uh, out of the way as this uh, 
glowing uh, redness comes up uh, and runes magically swirl be, uh, underneath your feet and the, the center obelisk then lights up bright reddish white almost as if it's like a lightsaber uh, and, it's a devil. Uh, and mm. the, there's a, a beam of light that shoots up, shoots up right into the air uh, lighting up the entirety of the forest around you uh, and your vision <laughs> oh my god, god. And, uh, and your vision goes blank Oh no, were we blinded by the light? You definitely, and if you'll get inspiration if you can sing it. Blinded by the light. <laughs> we will have to work on the timing there, but that was a that was brilliant enough to be a clip late for for later. Yay. Um, Alrighty. Um, as the as the light subsides and your guys' uh, eyes start to to adjust uh, to the light, uh, you guys find yourself at uh, this map that is loading up right now. By the way, I just have to say, out of game while it's loading, Minnow, I liked your part the best. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10. Good job. Head, shoulders, knees, and hooves. That'll be isn't it? It works. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I was singing and nobody could hear me and my neighbor looked at me funny. That's fine. I could, I'll have you do a voiceover <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> if if you, you want. It me to it's, total, it. it's totally... Mm, we'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> so let me know when you guys load in here. It's all fuzzy. Okay. Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear? Looks like... Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. Looks like... Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. JD is still loading in. Give it a minute. There's, there was a lot of assets on this on this map here, so... I gotta put There's so many assets in here. Wow. <laughs> to make it... It didn't even start loading till just then. That's weird. Well, it, it tells me where you're at loading wise and what your ping rate is in the upper right hand corner, at least on my screen anyway. What it is, is on mine, but it, it was set at zero for ages and then suddenly kicked in. Oh, it, so it, it, looks like it, it, it looks like it loaded for Graham first and then it goes to you next. So it's like like 97, 98% right now. Violet, did it let you load in? Nope. Okay. Well, have you watched the, the stream for. Reference. Clarity. Out. Yay. Okay. Um, Someone's doodled numbers on the carpet. Shh. <laughs> I need. <laughs> I needed them really badly because my brain hurt by the time I got to this point when building stuff. Um, Vandalism. Right. Right. No. No penises. No penises, it's please. Like somebody peed on the carpet. As, oh my god. Oh, so as your as your guys's vision uh, basically returns to normal, are you look around and you're not in that cul-de-sac uh, anymore here. Um, you guys all find yourself on this uh, platform with these runes swirling around your uh, around your feet here. Um, and you guys find yourself in this kind of grassy field at the, at the edge of a forest with a castle behind um, behind Astrid. That's um an amazing castle that looks like bear with me here Magic. yeah uh the castle consists of seven crumbling towers of different sizes and heights um but the upper stories uh are, are all in varying states of collapse uh there's a short flight of steps that lead up to to a terrace in the front of the main building main entryway and Past the wreckage of a pair of sundered doors lies a shadowed hall. Uh, I'm assuming you guys went around the front and looked at it to make this sound okay. Um, round towers loom over this entranceway with a dark air where there's dark arrow slits pointing down on the terrace. Uh, from where you guys are currently at, there, uh, you're able to immediately see uh, a patch of rubble. Uh, at the at the edge where you see all these kind of crumbling uh, towers being there, uh, everybody, do me a favor and give me a perception check. Uh, 
Uh, Herbert rolled a total of 16. One plus four, five. So I've got my head in the clouds. I have no clues going on. <laughs> I rolled a 17. JD, with the win, sir. Damn. 17 plus one, 18. Wow. JD sees all the things. Yeah. Um, pardon me. Minnow, as um, Graham and Minnow, you're able to, to look at this span of, uh, of rubble and, and notice some, some wooden planks that look like they are just kind of, uh, you know, blocking, um, you know, part of all this rubble. Like it may, it might've been like a, uh, a ladder or not a ladder, but a, uh, a bridge at some point that, you know, collapsed down at one point when the, um, uh, when the towers collapsed there as well. But there's something strange about the, uh, about the wood. It's, it, from your guys' past experience, it doesn't look like wood, but it looks like a painting. Do you investigate? Yes. Ooh. Oh, you're not investigating. Your head's in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody tell me what's going on so I can come investigate. I want to investigate too. Uh, as you guys get closer to the to the rubble here of the in these uh, these weird flat planks, you you actually recognize what you're seeing. It's actually crudely drawn canvas uh, in the shape of of wood planks. And a small handle that looks like a, a like a, a piece of knotted wood uh, with a nail sticking out of it. This is giving me some Grifto vibes. Yeah. Can I roll Arcana? Sure. Go for it. Let's see if I touch any magic. Let's see if I know how to roll these. Okay. With the, um, is that with the five? Do you have any modifiers on that, Calypso? Plus two. Okay, so seven. Um, Calypso, with the with with that amount there, you're able to see that this is actually just uh, it's just plain old canvas. There's nothing, no magical properties about it. It's just a piece of canvas with the, uh, um, uh, with wood planks drawn on it. I'm still suspicious, but okay. Anybody else? Anybody else want to help her out? I will I try if, after Minnow. I was going to say, I suggest that we pull it out and have a good look at it rather than worry about it in position. So dig it out. That seems Let's fair to me. Touch it. Well, I'm not touching it. I'm re removing the rocks and rubble from around it so that it, we can see it better. Oh. And then okay. maybe pick it up and move it. Yeet it. Okay, so Minnow, you're going over and doing what specifically before you roll? Clearing it so that we can get at it. I'm sorry, one more time. I didn't hear you. Clearing all the rubble and uh, so that we can get at it and grab it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and uh, give me a roll, actually, for uh, for like a straight up uh, investigation. We'll say. Okay. Okay. Investigation is a minus two, though. Okay. You're so only, only only eleven. Okay. Um, as you get closer to to the canvas, you you clearly notice this uh, makeshift handle that's supposed to basically look like a knot in the wood uh, with a nail basically securing it. You see it as a basically a handle, uh, and as you turn the handle, you realize as it's you know sitting there in your hand that this is a door, and you open it to to reveal a uh, a ladder uh, that basically takes you up to a concealed uh, second floor. Uh, where you see the edge of a uh, stone flagstone uh, uh, floor sitting in front of you. And with that, we're going to go ahead and call it, because we're at uh, 2 hours and 22 minutes as a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, mm -hmm. hanging on a cliff, and 
that's why it's called cliffhanger. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't steal that yeah. from Between the Lions. Right. <laughs> no. Alrighty. No, never. So we'll go ahead and call it here at this point here. Um, for everybody in the chat here, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Dank actually chimed in here. H Echo. Oh, he says the D&D is real. Uh, Violet then later said the mic isn't working. Thank you for letting us know here, Violet. Uh, everybody, thanks for joining us here in chat. We're going to go ahead and end the stream at this point here. Stay tuned next week, same time, uh, 11 a.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time is going to be 10 a.m. Uh, West Coast Time. Uh, Central, that'll be 10 o'clock. No, no, uh, 12 noon yeah. uh, Central. And then 1 o'clock uh, for that two-hour period uh, at the uh, over on East Coast Time here. So um, we'll... We'll play it out here with uh, our sponsor because we forgot to put in our Love by Stella advert in the center here. Uh, and after that here, we'll go to a uh, ending of the stream. Uh, so go ahead and hit up the uh, Love by Stella. Go give her some love. Ask her some questions. Get the get the ball rolling. She loves questions about her stuff here. She actually has a, a new posting um, that she uh, put on her website the other day. Um, it does have some fun little gift things that she put on her page there. Uh, it's actually of a booby pillow. Um, they're actually, uh, two, she actually, uh, knitted, uh, two, two breasts with nipples on it, uh, that actually has, uh, like basically a bikini top on it. And it's a, like a neck rest pillow that you would normally take on an airplane, which I wouldn't recommend, but, I... but if, if you, if you do it at home that you could, that definitely would come in handy if you could uh, sleep on some bosoms. So check her out and, uh, we'll lead with that. We'll, uh, say bye everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> Either guys and gals, I'm super excited about our sponsor because they make such cool oh, shit. items and decorations that you are just not going to be able to live without. Got a new baby that's on their way into your family? Then check out this baby bonnet and booty set. How about this cool baby cocoon with hat and mittens? And for you new parents out there, how about a crochet sleepy head? Just sleep with a sleepy head for a few nights and lightly spritz it with your deodorant, perfume, or body spray so your baby will fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer with your smell. How about a Baby Yoda for your child or grandkids? Or even a Scooby-Doo dog for your child's forever home? And with winter on its way, Love by Stella also makes a cornucopia of blankets. And you know what? That's not all. Love by Stella also does custom designs. Take this kid's drawing, for example, that he did at school one day, for instance. Love by Stella made it into a full-sized best friend. Wreaths, coasters, beanies, dish scrubbies. Love by Stella does it all. Even custom unicorn pieces I can't show you on YouTube. Love by Stella even sent me this super warm beanie for my chrome dome, as well as this awesome knight's helmet beanie, with movable face mask for super cold and windy days, or just some extra cosplay for your next D&D session. And it's all super easy to order. Just go to Facebook and search Love by Stella and scroll down to see all the different items she has to offer. You can even ask her a direct question through the messenger function or even send her an email message directly. They're quick to respond and they take pride in each and every one of their handmade products. And now, back to the episode.